Welcome back in, you wonderful people. We are here with Blood uh, Bubble 3, and it's the season finals. Uh, it's me, Adam Savage, here with Jimmy Fantastic, and we have got ourselves a final matchup coming your way very, very shortly here on this very first day of our official broadcast. I mean, Jimmy, let's just take a moment here again to say a massive shout-out to Nacon, uh, to our production partners, everyone who's going to put this together, because in Cyanide Studios, this has been amazing that we can do this and, and share with everybody at home as well all these different matchups and all the players as well who make this scene so fun. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Honestly, I think it's really good. I think it's won over a lot of the community. I think it's I think it's been a great tournament, and uh, really, you know, really looking forward to you know the rest of the rest of today and tomorrow and next weekend. Yes, where they somehow in one week build us a completely 80s themed basement we've, we've just made up out of nothing. Uh, if you missed that part, you can join in the chat and find out all about it. Uh, for now, though, let's uh, turn our attentions back to the competition. Obviously, uh, lots at stake here. There is cash prizes, of course, the accolade of being the season final champion. Uh, but that's all next weekend. Right now, though, players are starting to qualify. Players are also starting to drop out of our competition. Uh, we've got a big, uh, a big matchup coming up our way as well. We've already seen Artemis uh, compete earlier on against Andy Davo, and now it's the turn of a Cal Troop uh, to take him on in winners bracket round two. Here, I mean, um, is this Artemis? You know, is this a, is this a, a match that he'd be probably relishing the opportunity to be in as well here, Jimmy? Do you think? Uh, well, I think he'll be relishing because it's not the dwarves. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that easy for him. You know, uh, the humans—they're not as strong as the orcs, but they're a lot faster. So, like. They're not easy. I think somehow humans do better against underworld than orcs do a lot of the time, and and this this kind of this kind of team scaven or underworld are made for humans a little bit. Um, but but the but the problem is underworld are a better team than them. <laughs> That, that, that is a big factor. I mean, that you said is you know if you can if you can harness the power of the underworld, then you you're in a in a mighty fine position indeed here. I mean, for Caltroop as well. I mean, a, a one zero victory early on against Blotinus in, in round one here. How will how will do you think Caltroop would have prepared for this this uh, this head to head as well? Is there anything kind of that to, you know, obviously Artemis with the with the, the history that that they have as well? What can Caltroop do here to ensure that they? find a way to get in because don't forget as well this the winner of this next the victor of this next matchup will qualify into next weekend's grand finals as well yeah well i mean he he, he actually he finished second in the naf kickoff event to qualify for this and, and you know lots of high pressure games so i guess he's he's got that you know mentality already i think that's the most important thing really that is going to be the mental element for him because uh you know he's got to, he's got to not give up hope and he's got to keep rolling the dice and hope that he can make things happen. He's got a tackler, so that's good. You know, he's got to leverage the tackle, make sure he keeps smashing the uh, stunty guys, and and really try and exploit them. He's got to keep rolling the dice, <laughs> rolling the dice. Figuratively oh, and yeah. literally. Um, <laughs> now, we are going to see ourselves some cash prizes. Hopefully, we can pop those up on the screen for you as well. Now, you can see exactly how the land lies in terms of prizing in this competition too here. So, uh, you know, and that's the thing, I think, you know, to walk away with uh, with a bit of cash as well. And I say a bit of cash, a lot of cash there off the grabs here for our players uh, is, a, is a huge feat. But, um, yeah, to, to be champion of this as well, like the, the, the first officially broadcast uh, finals as well here is, I mean, Jimmy, this, this is awesome. Completely awesome, yeah. Honestly, I I really wish I was uh, I really wish I was doing an Andy and <laughs> and commentating and playing because yeah, it's great. I, yeah, it would be a bit amazing to win this tournament. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, would do. I mean, um, handy Andy, literally the man with a million different arms. Because he one minute he's casting, then he's playing, then he's doing something. I don't, I don't know. The guy is, is is relentless. I love to see it. Um, for you guys as well, we should probably prepare you for what's coming your way here as well. Hopefully, we'll see some team lineups in a second here as well. Uh, and we first uh, we'll try to take a look at Artemis. I think first and foremost, and see exactly how his squad shapes up too uh and uh you know what is it about the way that he played earlier on against because andy obviously went one zero up as well here in his last match um managed to find a way back in yes there was that kind of you know chain of events that unfolded in that kind of second half were kind of fortuitous indeed for um art but what is it you know about the, about the kind of like the squad with the underworld that is a uh, so damn menacing <laughs> yeah, well, he's 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 leaned in the damage more. He's taken the claw rat ogre. He's taken the block uh, gutter runner. He's you know, very safety first. Art is a very safety first player. He loves going safe moves first and all that. He's he constantly berates uh, anyone, anyone and everyone for for not playing safe enough. And he really does play safe. So he, he's you know he's gone for the block gutter runner. He's gone for the wrestle clan rats, and and he's leaned in the damage with the uh, tackle. 
uh, sorry, the, the dirty player and the sneaky git, which, you know, the humans are going to be a bit susceptible to, and he's got the tackle to deal with the human catchers. So it, it's matching up pretty well, I think. I think maybe he's better than the normal uh, Underworld build would do against Coltrix humans. Yeah, and those, those four re-rolls as well, I mean, if, should it go into overtime, they play an important part as well, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's got. He can hold them for the the one turn attempt in, like you know, if if necessary, or he can just you know hold them for overtime. So he's going to really try and go safe as possible, really safe, keep everything till the last second, and then unleash it all in one turn. Uh, Call troop here. He's got three guard, which I I, don't, I honestly would have rather seen an extra guard rather than that mighty blow because he's got mighty blow in the ogre. But um, three guards should be just about enough for him if, against Art, right? He doesn't he doesn't need that much guard against Art Miss. So this is working out pretty decent for him. Um, it's just that, yeah, it's it's a bit uh, it, it's just it's a bit humany, you know. <laughs> that's the, that's the problem. It's a it's, bit it's, too humany. It's a bit too humany. Yeah, they've got a lot of speed though, they, and and the underworld they're quite maneuverable with the stunty dodges. But well, they're not actually that fast. Their gutter runner is fast. Um, but it, so you'll have that movement seven guy to hunt down the gutter runner, and uh, you know the whole team. They're, they're, they're fast, and their guards are fast. Everything's fast except uh, except uh, <laughs> they haven't got that much that much guard. Basically, they've, they've only got the three guard. And then against Artemis, they don't need that much guard, and they've got the tackle. Um, so yeah, it, it, it should be an interesting matchup for sure. It will be. It will be. We always say for you guys at home as well, make sure to play along. You know, let us know in the chat exactly who you think is going to go all the way, who's going to qualify. One of those six finalist places, don't you think? We saw Strider earlier on the competition stride their way uh, into uh, into next weekend. And uh, whether Artemis or Coltrude will be right behind them, who knows? You'll let us know exactly who you think is going to be the one to join Strider. And we'll definitely see next weekend. Um, it's coming our way very, very soon here, folks. We'll jump into it ASAP for you. Now, of course, as well, we're hearing actually you know, the comms are telling us that the match is actually ready to rock and roll so we're actually going to jump into that as soon as humanly possible uh obviously that the course of this as well we've got our, our, our man uh, andy davo who is part of our broadcast team uh who'll be joining us at some stage along the line i've no doubt about it as well but currently in the middle of their lower bracket match against plotinus right now but this is it here we go jimmy super saturday uh, uh, comes to it's uh comes to its end with our last match on the official broadcast here and we have ourselves artemis versus call troop it's a big one yeah it, <laughs> there are there are no guard biggins in this game but there are there are uh, guard blitzers and you know humans are pretty nice it's quite a nice kit this isn't it all white here we get to see artemis's purple i thought it was a bit too close to uh and he's blue in the first game to but now it's pretty clear right the two teams and uh yeah it, artemis won the toss choose to receive in the rain which does mean you know that's a four plus pickup for the thrower or a, a three plus pickup or handoff for the gutter runner so that's a a little bit of an impact um on his drive but you know he's built for damage so he's, he's always going to receive and try and try and uh, you know inflict some pain here early as he can the rate, the weather, the weather aspect as well. I mean, how does I mean, does that, in your opinion here, what does that, how does that influence proceedings here, Jimmy? It makes it makes actually, it makes a short kick a lot more dangerous um, because if it's a deep kick and well, I think he's not going to Daka. So you know, we saw him Daka versus Andy, the withdrawn offense, take everybody back. I guess now he's just going to try and fight the humans because he's he's got this claw mighty, he's got the dirty player, he's got the sneaky git. He's just going to try and fight the humans, and yeah, we see him setting up now to fight them. Um, so it's probably not going to make, be that impactful, honestly. You'll probably, you'll probably, you know, still got a seventy-five percent pick up with a thrower. I think he'll pick it up on the thrower, and then he'll wait for like a good point to hand it off to the uh, gutter runner. So it actually shouldn't be too impactful. Um, but it could it could it could decide the game, you know. That's the thing with with the weather; it like it only affects pickups really. Um, but w when it does have an effect, it's it's often a brutal game lose. Well, game deciding effect. It, it, what it might have done is it might have encouraged him to kick, uh, you know, so that so that it was Coltrip that had to deal with the the rain for the pickup. But you know, I guess he he just thought the damage was was too much of an advantage. To give up that advantage for the slightly reduced pickup chance. 
Also, I, I guess the thing is uh, using rerolls. There's the reroll aspect of it. Um, I said before, you know, like you, you've you've kind of got to use rerolls to ensure your score happens a lot of the time, more than to you know spend them on defense that might not work. So the fact that you know you want to, you, I really love receiving in uh, in NAF style because uh, with uh, sorry in overtime format, so that if I have to on defense, I can not use any rerolls, save all four rerolls for overtime. So I think. I think that even though the the rain is bad, I think you know damage build overtime format he was always going to receive. Searing news coming through as well that uh, Andy's Andy's game has also got into overtime for a second time today. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty pretty grueling mentally there for Andy. <laughs> there we were complaining about the cats and dogs raining the cats and dogs on this uh, on this match up here, but Andy, I mean, it must be showering. Well, I guess just, just yeah, exhaustion wherever he is in the world. Um, <laughs> it's uh, that's, a, that's a, I mean that's a, that's a lot of blood ball to play in a, in a single evening, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, I mean he's he's in the losers bracket now, so he'll be playing tomorrow as well, won't he? If he if he wins here, so it, this is going to be this is going to be pretty pretty tough for him. But he's he's got to win this game first, I guess. <laughs> certainly does, certainly does. And into turn number one. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about the kind of earlier on the kind of uh, the predicted kind of you know, I guess winner here. I mean, it's, it's good to actually see Call Troopers here. Obviously, we saw Artemis earlier on in the broadcast here, but it's good to see Call Troopers as well on the on the uh, on the main broadcast here to kind of see uh, obviously that that win earlier on. But the humans as well. I think another race that we haven't seen at all really um, on the broadcast thus far. So again, for newer viewers, it's another faction you can see how they operate as well, which kind of opens up even kind of more opportunities to. for, for you know, viewers at home to jump in and uh, and test them out yeah yeah hum humans actually do get uh, quite a bit better in the new rules um uh, ball three it's mostly because their catchers can become sneaky get dirty players uh, which is that's the absolute damage that's the the holy grail of damage in this in this edition of blood bowl and uh the fact that humans can become like the best damage dealers very easily very quickly very easily uh big 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 deal for them so uh but not so much in this game right in this game he, he's just relying on the movement the movement is the big thing here the, the tackle and the movement and he's going to hope that's going to be enough but if if art gets rolling it's uh it's going to have to get lucky okay so only a stun Ah, so Purple Chest in chat there is asking for the skill rings. I'll, I'll put them on for a second. Um, they're not... I think they look, you know, they're, they're good to put on for a little bit so you can pick out players. Um, you can see they're all colour-coded so you can see where the catcher is and the thrower. Only one catcher. That's interesting. I, I thought you'd have had two catchers um, just by default. So interesting he's only got one catcher, but it has got block on it. Block on the thrower. And then the four blitzers are uh, pretty distinct. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the players there, and I sometimes lose sight of the snotlings here. Uh, when I when I play Underworld, I do tend <laughs> yeah. to leave this on just so I can actually see their ring because they're so small. It's very easy to you know to get hidden behind another player and lose track of where they actually are. Well, the terrain earlier on in that in that first uh, the first game when it was like grey stone slabs, a bit simpler. But now when it's green on green, it's like I don't know where I'm looking. What am I what am I even seeing right now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, humans are quite good. They, they, they've got lot, the, the movement is the big thing because at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I guess you're not a Magic the Gathering kind of person, but <laughs> there's a, there's a very famous uh, article in Magic the Gathering about who's the beatdown, and like that, that's very applicable to Blood Bowl. That in Blood Bowl, like one side is always the beatdown and one side is is not, and you've got to know which which half you are basically. And humans. They try to be the beatdown always, but sometimes they can't, right? Versus Orcs, they're, 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 they now become like the agility team. And that's really a bad place for them to be. What they want to be is they want to be the beatdown versus a soft team. And Underworld, while Underworld can do a lot of damage, they're still a soft team, you know? So so they can, the, the humans can get on top of the Underworld just as well as Andy could get on top of them with the Orcs. So it's, uh, this is basically, a great, it is a great matchup for humans in principle, but in reality, Underworld are a monster team, so it's not that good. <laughs> Just 
Just looking at the uh, the brackets as well here. Quick update for you guys watching at home if you haven't seen it already. So, uh, Diomed versus Moomin Slayer. Diomed has won 1-0, meaning Diomed also has qualified for next weekend as well here, Jimmy. Um, wow. Surprised, shocked, happy, expected? Um, well, after he beat Elliot not surprised um so yeah he, in beating elliot was a big one right that could have that could have gone 50 50 went to overtime and uh i think once he beats elliot i don't think it's that surprising he beats movement slayer afterwards no disrespect to movement slayer but um yeah so i mean that's that's great for him isn't it straight through no problems oh Lovely. yeah so three confirmed already i uh, know two confirmed already for the um the next round uh, and mm. next weekend, should I say. Um, but that means that Moomin Slayer will go up against Plotinus or Andy, the victor in that game, which is currently in overtime, will play Moomin Slayer in lower bracket round two uh, at some stage tomorrow, which is um, which is kind of not, yeah, I mean, very, very exciting. But, you know, who knows how it's going to unfold, but always want to give you guys the know-how so you know exactly how things are shaping up. I think that's what made this competition so exciting as well here. You mentioned 16 players, all top, top tier uh, when it comes to Blood Bowl 3 and um, already some qualifying and others being knocked out, uh, some still remaining in the competition and uh, simply going into the lower bracket right now, Jimmy. So it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's all to play for very much here and uh, everyone capable of beating one another and going through to next weekend. Yeah, it's absolutely, it's absolutely anybody's game. Yep. And uh, super interesting. I mean, amazing for uh, Diamond. The Diomed. 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 Diomed, yep. He <laughs> a lot, a lot of Dio's, Dio's, yeah, a lot, a lot of those. Yeah, I always get confused. Uh, amazing for him, like, beating two Underworld teams is pretty amazing, right? Like, that's it's not a great yeah. matchup for him. And uh, it's, it's like, you know, it's not a terrible matchup, but it's not it's not great for him. So really, really great for him to get those two wins, for sure. M amazing, really. So, yeah, mm. very, very strong performance for him. Um, he did use orcs on the ladder as well, so like it, you know, he's he's obviously he's he's on form with orcs. Like I think that is an underrated an underrated element of the game. It's just you know that absolute you know in being in form and 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 absolute knowledge inside out of of the of how your race works and what you're expecting and aiming for. So he's obviously on the ball with them. So he go, go, tries to nail the rat ogre there. That makes sense, right? He is he is a bit frail. Um, the, he saw the roger removal in Art's first game versus Andy, and that was Cordrip's first first go to was just instantly trying to remove it. Yeah, Andy's game's currently in the nineteenth turn. Still one one in overtime. <clears throat> It's, it's I'm, 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 I'm praying for him. He's put in, he's put in so much work today. <laughs> Big thinking turn for Art here. This is, this is the problem with the building for damage idea. <laughs> it's the, you know, it gets you into fights where your guys are pretty soft, and it's, it's, it's nine. You know, Underworld when they've got twelve or thirteen players, very strong. Underworld when they've got 10 players, not so much. So getting into a yeah. fight, okay, you might win it and make it easy, but you might lose it and make it very difficult. So it's tricky. It's a, it's a bit of a, you know, a dice, dice, dicey way of playing. And surprised, honestly, I'm surprised mm -hmm. Art lent into it like this. Has Coltrip already used five and a half minutes of his extra time? Uh, Surely not. No, I think I think it, I think it's a little bug that it starts off at two. Oh, and then right. The first time you go into it, it goes to like seven twenty nine. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking where, where's that five and a half minutes just disappeared? To? What, what was I doing? Yeah, no, I, it, that can't be. That can't be. That's what researching researching eighties cartoons. Clearly, sorry. That's where that's where my time went. <laughs> yeah, just just listen to the eighteen theme for, for five <laughs> minutes. The eighteen. Th oh, I. Yeah, I mean, there's so many great things. I think, um, <laughs> but I think, I think, I think we talk about those kind of things when you think about like sort of blood bowl because they, they, they've all been in, they all inspire one another. We kind of we talked about other kind of ball games, you know, the same kind of like time period. Everything is kind of like been inspired from one way or another from, from other you know, taking certain things and kind of made it to its own and different aspects and things. I think that's what makes it all kind of like feel like it's all part of the same family in many respects. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a, it was a great time, wasn't it? And yeah, I guess it, when we play this game, it reminds us of our youth a bit when all of that stuff was around. Yeah. <laughs> the good yeah. old days. Yeah, it certainly does. So the, human, the humans here, do they have the capacity to um, to overwork an underworld team quite, quite simply, would you say? Or do you think it's a case of you have to really... Things have to work in your favour, be it the dice or the way in which your opponent plays to really kind of capitalise. A bit of both, I think. I think, you know, playing always makes a great deal of difference. What happens in these games is because both players are always good, there's there's more chance of the dice being the determining factor because they're not going to make like a bad mistake if if they get the good dice. Yeah. So. So you you kind of need both. You you know like it, very unlikely that Art just does something really stupid and plays terribly. So <laughs> for Cold Revere, he's got to he's got to play well and probably roll well as well. Um, but you know I'm, he's more than capable of, of playing well and making all the right decisions and and you know he can get on top of them. That's the thing. You know they 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 like they like Orcs plus speed um, in these kind of matchups. But you know he's already down two players. So. He's not quite as strong as the Orcs already, you know, he's already down players, so yeah, it's getting a little bit getting a little bit scary for him. He's not really using his speed either. Speed is like the, the you know the hardest the hardest uh, advantage to leverage basically, like especially because he hasn't got the agility, so uh, elves and stuff and gutter runners with being agility four. Uh, sorry, two plus nowadays. Not only can they move a lot of squares, they can also like you know move through squares and around people and everything. Whereas humans, being agility three, even though they're fast, they often can't use their speed. Um, right. He's going to he's going to try and pile in, I think, and make this as hard as he can for Artemis. But the danger then is it just gives Art more hits. You know, if if I you know if he if he gives Art a puzzle to solve, if Art solves the puzzle, then all of a sudden that's that's you know that many more humans. Eating dirt. Do you think that call troops, you know, initial kind of concept of what was going to happen in this game would have been something like to try and take control at all, or kind of would it be more a case of just trying to prevent what Artemis might chuck at him until the time is right? I think. I mean, just looking at how where he's positioning in comparison to Andy. I know, I know it's different because it was Andy's offensive drive and it's uh, Coltrip's defensive drive. You'll notice that this, this guard player is isolated, right? He's, he's not... Andy would have never done that. Andy would have had this guy next to the ogre and stuff and you would have had that guy tucked in behind as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and, Andy was playing really defensive of, yeah, of, his, was, yeah. of his players. Whereas now Coltrip, I, I, I don't know if Coltrip's, you know, inexperienced versus Underworld or just doesn't mind and thinks, you know, maybe he's got to, you know, Hope things happen, you know. Maybe, maybe, hopefully, pull the rattle grout position. But it's looking like he's not too concerned about taking damage. Which, considering you know Andy was terrified of it, <laughs> um, Coldrip doesn't seem to be too bothered. But Coldrip does have thirteen players, and humans are meant to be armor nine plus, whereas orcs are armor ten plus, right? So or orcs do play worse down players than humans do. And they do play worse out bash than humans do. So maybe he's just not that concerned, and he's willing to like take a few hits to make a few hits, mm -hmm. uh, which which is fair. Like that's a completely fair way of looking at it. But uh, and again, and maybe maybe he doesn't think he's the favorite. You know, like I don't think he should think he's the favorite. So <laughs> if he thinks he's not the favorite, then maybe like he thinks playing like this he can get lucky. Um, I think he should be trying to get lucky. I think I think it's very important in in Blood Bowl to like. You know, be able to assess well and honestly what your chances are and stuff, and you know whether you're the the underdog or the overdog, and and you know what you've got to work out what you've got to do to win. So yeah, it's I, I he he wins by bullying. I think he I think he does win by getting in his guards and his ogre and and removing you know removing these uh, snotlings and stuff, removing players, and I think that's how he wins. But but the problem is you you give hits. You know he's been taking hits to to get those hits and. You know, Art's just beaten everybody, everybody away here, hasn't he? Knocked over three players, stunned one, pushed the other one back. So, Cold Truth just keeps coming into him and he keeps beating him away. So, yeah. Oh, wow. So, 
He rolls a one, fails the argue the call, he gets the re-roll from um, bribery and corruption. It still fails, so his sneaky git is sent off on like the third foul, third or fourth. So not terrible, he, he got some use from the sneaky git. Sent off for a stun. I mean, the, the good thing about sneaky git is that you are guaranteed a stun. It's probably not very good to foul a stunned player. Um, <laughs> I guess he did it because he's mighty blown, he was scared of him making damage, but... Uh, I'm sure, had had Artemis seen somebody foul an already stunned player, he would <laughs> he would have not reacted calmly. <laughs> so that's fun. Oh, so he fails the bonehead, fails the loner for the bonehead. Yeah, he's going to go in and smash the smash the rat ogre with his ogre. Completely, completely reasonable thing to do. Yeah, our brittle. We saw we saw Andy hit the ogre with a troll. So. He's trying to do the same thing there. Oof. Last turn from the ball troop there, wow. Yeah, it's just, it's just gonna, you know, he's just he's just giving up all these hits, this is the problem, you know? He's yeah. just giving up like four four hits here plus a blitz. So probably all these four guys who are engaged have all got a good chance of ending up on the floor. And maybe fouling the uh the mighty blow of this guard with this dirty player he's got. So yeah, we could see, we could see a bunch of knockdowns. I think the dirty player is just going to block. Yep. Is this the thrower or the catcher? As the thrower. Another removal. And he can follow because he's already got the two assists in. He, he he did his safe moves first, got his assists in for this hit. I don't know about this fella. I don't know if he wants to move him somewhere. Pushes him away. That means he's probably got to do the blitz before he can uh, do the last hit. Or he could surf him, couldn't he? Oh, I think he's thinking about the surf now. One, two, three, four, five. Six, yeah, he might go for the surf here. I guess you could make this block and then get the assist, another assist in. GFI though. Rush. Yeah, <laughs> okay, rush. Okay, he's not doing rush. Rush, rush. <laughs> It's so hard. It's literally so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so he does move him into a place that he couldn't have got before the block, so... Although it was a safe move, he was waiting on something happening. Yeah, he's going for the surf. Yeah, he doesn't get the surf, but he gets... Take it. Gets a removal. And now he can come back and uh, assist over here, I, th I believe. Yep, lovely. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll stand on the catcher because the catcher's strength too, and he's he's got the tail. But no, he comes back there, and makes an extra hit. So yeah, Art's loving this now. I'm sure three players removed, and the humans are still trying to fight him. So, you know, they're just they're just down so many players that uh, it's probably going to end badly for them, and and just keep getting worse. This is the thing. Like one, once the underworld get ahead, they're just great front runners. Now they just start to tee off with claw every turn, like you know. Yeah. And again, like the like the where once Andy had eight players, you know how do you stop the rat ogre getting at you every turn with claw mighty? It's really hard, and and call trips on eight players now, and and this claw like how how on earth he just ha does not have the players to stop this roger coming in and smashing <laughs> something every turn. Do you think you think most most that's one of the most deadly things I guess about the underworld is that as you said t teams just seem to capitulate when they take a bit of a uh, when they get ahead because they're, they're they're too difficult to catch a lot of the time. Yeah, the, the, this this build the, this build is a very high rolly build that he's gone with with this the claw and the dirty player and the sneaky git. It's it's and and not going for the one turn. So like your plan A is to is to do this to people. 
yeah. then your plan B is to score a one turn if like the game's close and stuff. So like Elliot's built into the plan B, hoping that he'll just get plan A randomly. And it's not a bad strategy, it's it's the most common strategy. Whereas Art has tried to make plan A stronger at the cost of plan B. So it, it's pretty interesting. An interesting way of doing it, and, and so it does make it, you know, they're already scary when they don't build for this, but when they do build for this, they're unbelievably scary. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if there's a, a clever surf on here. Probably not. Well, definitely not now. Which is stupid from even considering it's actually turn six, so he's moved the he's moved the gutter runner up. It's funny, you know, like chain pushes and surfs and stuff. Loads of people mm -hmm. like to think they're clever by you know doing you know oh I spotted this great chain mm -hmm. push and uh, I did this great surf, but you know a lot of the time you can you can lose yourself doing that, you know, lose yourself the game <laughs> yeah. because you you want you want to you want to you want to do something cool or think that you think that you're smart for figuring it out and like, you do feel smart when you work them out sometimes but <laughs> there's also sometimes you've just got to do like the basic the basic moves and uh and just secure the drive so as it as it stands just 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 thinking about okay the next weekend already kind of casting my, my my mind towards what what could be a pretty pretty special season finals finale right thinking about the different races already there so you've got strider lizard men you've got diamed orcs Let's say, for instance, Underworld goes through with Artemis, and then you've got Hero or Inarion, which is either Dwarfs or, I think, Black Orcs, is it? Yeah. You've really got four separate races all in that final. Uh, yeah. Does that make it more interesting, do you think, to a degree? Do you think it makes it kind of uh, tougher? I mean, do, do you think some teams will have an advantage going into that? I mean, how, how, how does that play out your your his, your yeah, experience? What does that I, make? I, is it more interesting that way? Yeah, I think, I mean, a, a lot of, something you'll see a lot is people try to, you know, encourage diversity in team selection. So you have these NAF tournaments, they, they, you know, they generally give better packages to worse teams, like Imperial Ability, getting a few more skills and stuff and, and things like that. So they, they want people to use different teams. They don't just want to see, you know, 56 underworld teams in the play-ins <laughs> and uh, so so tournament organizers generally want this sort of thing to happen with the different races and you know the the play the play-ins to the qualification for the play-ins was also like the top two of each race and stuff so like you know more, more race like race diverse like this is is something that people want for sure and uh i think art is if art can get to the final four he's gonna really quite like having uh, the armor nines, you know, because he's got this claw, he's going to feel really happy that, you know, there's dwarves, dwarves, orcs and lizard men, all of them with armor nine and all of them, which is right ogre can, can claw. He'll be, he'll feel very justified in his build, I think. Oh, oh, KO'd. And now there's nothing in the way at all. So that is the score all but secured. You see the chat here. Dimmy's asking, "Have I ever painted a mini?" And yeah, I love that Motti's straight in there as well. I've painted Space Crusade a mini. Yeah, I have Space Crusade minis. <laughs> that was my that was my life. I and I had a, a big time. In my life was painting the minis. Yeah, but actually, my brother-in-law is big time, big time into painting miniatures. Huge, got like mm. a, a, a whole space in his house dedicated to it. Glass case, like respect it. Nice. Although I've got the uh, I've got like the. When it comes to painting, I mean, I'm I'm as delicate as a as a sledgehammer. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> These troll-like hands that I've been given, <laughs> like, they're like mallets, Jimmy. Like mallets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Neither do I. Apart from, thank you, God. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess not being not being able to paint is a is a small small price to pay for malatans. <laughs> why I married an art teacher? It's why I married an art teacher? You know, someone had to be good at, it, good at it. So, but I think that's the thing is, um, yeah. I mean, I think I think uh, growing up, I was I was never really that when it came to painting minis. I I I, I, en I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I actually think my my uncle. I'm going into a world tangent now. My uncle, when I was growing up, was uh, quite into painting like miniature kind of um, 
figures from like naval history. He was big into naval history. I remember that there was younger as well. So naturally, I kind of tried it out and that kind of thing. But um, uh, yeah, it's, how, how about Jimmy? Were you, in, were you into that as well? Uh, not so much naval. I, I had airfix, you know, the, the old airfix planes. I had, yeah, I had yeah, some yeah. of those planes. I think that, I don't know if that was before or after, you know, I found out about Hero Quest and, and Games Workshop, but I think it was around the same kind of time. I probably did both at the same time, but I don't know if which one came first. Chicken and egg situation. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna go Jimmy by Adam Mallet Hand Savage. But thank you for <laughs> suggesting that as a as a potential new nickname for myself. Oh, <laughs> imagine imagine my imagine me walking in. Oh, here comes here comes old Mallet Hands. Hi guys. <laughs> it's a great nickname to be honest. <laughs> Mallet Hands. Oh god, yeah, that would be the worst. <laughs> I imagine Jimmy already knows somebody who called like Dave Mallet Hands. Mate, Jimmy, <laughs> I, I, have, I have one time in my life where, you know, nicknames when you're a kid. Can, I mean, they're, 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 people have nicknames that are the most innocuous things and it becomes this thing that sticks with them forever. But obviously, my, my, my real surname is Savage. Yeah, it's, cool. it's, it's okay. It's, it's fine. And I was younger. This one kid was like, oh, Adam Savage the Cabbage. And I was like, oh, brilliant. Here we go. So this kid goes, calls me Cabbage, right? And it keeps it keeps evolving it, and then it it just turns into cab. I'm like, he goes, all right, cab. I'm like, yep, yeah, all right, mate, yep, yeah, cab, fine. And one day it becomes cab driver. And I was like, okay, we've gone really we've gone really far removed from where we started here. And I kid you not, one day I was walking just in school, and he went, oi, taxi. And I thought, this is so, this has gone too far. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like seven it's like a great 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 grandchild of when it first started out is me mental madness it's crazy. Oh, honestly ridiculous <laughs> absolutely ridiculous oh, and punter no i will not go i will not be using adam's sausage fingers savage either that's definitely not going to be sticking to thank you <laughs> oh, dear. well I, I think the smart move here from Art is to just score and not take any ridiculous chance of failure. But it's not something we ever do. We'll we'll we will always greed this hit and then this hit and uh, this hit. So oh not this one. He's tackled. So he could blitz there and block there. Oh uh, no, he's not gonna. He's not gonna. Surely not. I mean, he could. I don't think he should, but he might. This is if he if he does okay no he's not. I thought he was thinking of blitzing with a rat ogre, which seems crazy, but it's something he could have done if he could have made it strength nine and still got three dice on it. But even then, that's that's pretty wild. Like I know it's a tackle player, like it's pretty good to get rid of a block tackle player, but yeah okay, he just did that to tease to, to, to I think he just did it to tease us to be just honest. To just to tease us. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So there's a one there's a one turn chance. He's still got a so you know there was no permanent damage on the humans. So they do have the full team. So we've got the classic, you know, reset for the second half, and he's there's actually taken two Kaz, uh, uh, the send off and the Kaz. So you know, not too terrible, right? You one nil down, kind of the expected result. You know, teams in Blood Bowl, they're kind of expected to score on the turn eight. O offenses are like expected to be a success. Um, which is why so many of these games go to overtime. They, they, you know, they go one-one, and then you get overtime. And uh, yeah, this is you know this isn't too bad for him. He's he's got one reroll for the one-turn attempt. It looks like Art is not setting up the snotlings on the LOS to deny the uh, the one turn completely, which is a choice. I I don't hate it whatsoever. I think if if this was the second half. I think he would put the snotlings on the line to completely stop it, but I think he just doesn't want them randomly to be killed in case it's overtime. So it's a more, more durable line. More durable. Yeah. <laughs> Taxi for Adam. <laughs> oh, no way. It's not started, is it? <laughs> Adam Uber Savage. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, I, I can't believe it's been extended even further. <laughs> oh my God, we've gone into the full ancestry now, like seven, eight times removed. 
<laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Taxi for Adam. Oh, great. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Why have I shared that with the world? It will never end now. <laughs> really great. Oh, so there we funny. go. Andy's game just finished 2 1. Let's okay. go, Andy, Davo. Let's go, Andy. There you go. <laughs> so it means he'll be playing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting his way through the loser's bracket. So tomorrow he takes on Plotinus in the next round. And no, that, that oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Plotinus game, yeah. Mummin Slayer, Mummin Slayer, you're right. Mummin Slayer. Ooh. Oh, Mummin Slayer, yeah. Um, Ooh, that's spicy. Yeah, Mummin Slayer, yeah. So very interesting how that one's going to turn out. Yeah, that is that is spicy. Flip me. That could that could go either way. Sure. And we sadly say goodbye to Plotinus, who no longer is in this competition. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I get. Wow, that's a really deep kick. I guess he was. Uh, I guess he was pretty disappointed that Andy, <laughs> Andy lost, right? <laughs> I think he would have. I think honestly, I think dwarves have got more chance versus underworld than uh, than orcs. Also, are pretty pretty rough for dwarves. Moomin Slayer is Underworld, old bro. Oh yeah, you could really go. You could really go uh, with that, lad. You could go. You could go lots of things down that road, then, couldn't you? <laughs> do you think? Do you think uh, for Moomin, um, for Andy now, having gone against Artemis earlier today, an Underworld team? Would that be an advantage, do you think, at all? Going into against Moomin Slayer tomorrow, having had that kind of experience already um, playing against the same race? Or is it every, yeah, regardless of who, who he plays, there's always going to be a way that, you yeah, know, the dice do the talking ultimately? I've, I mean, <laughs> I think it's probably not going to help him that much because he's Andy Davo. Do you know what I mean? He's already played like hundreds and hundreds of games with Orcs. <laughs> and I don't think like one more g game is going to change a lot. But, you know, maybe it will just help him mentally to feel a bit more comfortable that he's just played the matchup, you know? So, like, it's not, you know, it's more fresh in his mind, isn't it? So, like, a, it probably affects him mentally more than it does, like, you know, actually helping him uh, in terms of it making a difference mechanically. I think I think the mental aspect might be a thing. Yeah, I, th I think it could be. Yeah. I think it could be, yeah. You know, he's like... Because he nearly won, right? Like, he, he, he can think to himself he got a bit unlucky versus Art. What? Oh, he's doing the double dodge to hit the gutter! Oh my god, let's go. That is amazing. I thought he'd misclicked. <laughs> we killed the gutter! <laughs> okay, that was brilliant. I literally just thought he'd misclicked. What a great move. What an absolutely great move. Flip me. Legend. And the, so, the, the gutter stays out. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was actually a great, that was actually a great shout by Coltrude. Oh my God, he probably exploded on uh, Art's head there as well. <laughs> that, that's that's going to be a mental blow for Art to deal with. <laughs> how does that change, I mean, dynamic wise, what is that, how, how do you think that impacts uh, the second half here? That, is, that, is that a big turning point for Coltrude? It can be. I mean, so he's 1-0 down. So to win, again, he has to win in overtime. He's not going to win this in normal time. Um, it's just not going to happen. If you try to beat Artemis in normal time, you know, by scoring early, you will lose. So so to win this game, you have to win it in, in, in overtime, almost certainly. So that means that this gut runner is going to get some more chances to wake up. It might completely negate the one turn chance if it doesn't come back next time. And if it doesn't come back for overtime, then um, then it's a huge in overtime. And just for this drive, you know, it's 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 a movement nine play with edge, edge two plus. So even for the drive, it's gr it's great getting rid of the guy. Um, it actually caps out at eleven players as well. So so our uh, yep. Um, oh no 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 no. Sorry, he's got he's got a stop in there. So Art's got twelve players. Um, still, but you know, at least it's not that bad, right? Like it, it's it's an extra player off, and it, I mean it's the best player on the team, really. You know, the ro the rogue is pivotal, getting damage and stuff, but the the gutter is the is the is the thing that makes everything. So yeah, it's huge. I mean, he is the player that that makes underworld really. So yeah, that's that's huge. It's potentially huge. It's it's big just for this drive. I think it increases his odds of making it to overtime. Um, yeah, maybe significantly, right? Maybe significantly. 
and uh, it's certainly certainly like if it stays out it's incredible I mean it's it's game winning if it stays out so yeah huge huge can't overstate how huge it is getting rid of the gutter runner massive massive indeed oh my god there's another Kaz there we go oh wow so now Art does have 11 players I did fail at counting earlier but <laughs> but now it's okay <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, you know, uh, Underworld used to have uh, two blitzers and two throwers and they, they had no gutter runners. And there were people that actually believed Underworld would get worse when, when these new... Oh my goodness. Instant reroll. I wonder if Cold Troop should have made lots of safe moves first and accepted that triple skull. Because there's no gutter runner to, to run through and steal the ball. And he could have just made safe moves first and uh, been, you know, in a, in a very strong position and been able to take the, th the three skulls. But obviously, he didn't. He didn't anticipate the three skulls, so instant reroll and didn't make the safe moves. But I wonder if he could have done. Uh, yeah, in in 2020 was when the new edition of the rules came out for tabletop. So that that's another thing as well, actually. Yeah, like the the, the underworld came out three months ago in Blood Bowl three. But, you know, people like Strider and that who play tabletop have been using them for three years now. So that's an interesting element of the mm. Underworld. But also, I remember when, they, when the new rules came out in 2020, loads of people said, oh, yeah, Underworld are worse now that, they, now that they've only got one Blitzer. And I'm like, do you not realise they've, they've got a gutter runner? <laughs> like, it's the best player in Blood Bowl, pretty much. And, yeah, amazingly enough, Jimmy was right. And, uh, the, the, you know, the gutter runner makes the team completely. It's, it's incredible. Amazing how one one thing like that can just alter alter everything really. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. This this I don't think it makes Call Troop the favourite, but it's it really really makes it a lot closer. Wow, I I did not like the handoff there. Seventy five percent. I know you want it on the uh, movement eight lodge guy instead of the movement six no dodge, but you could hand off any time. I, I really actually quite like holding on the strength three guy, and then if you get into trouble, then go for the handoff to escape the trouble. But uh, just doing it for fun there, that could have gone badly for me. It could have scattered on the ogre, scattered on this, scattered on this, and the ball could have popped right out. Very unlikely, but it, it could have gone, you know, not in a good place. Mm. <laughs> Much more likely to go not in a good place. <laughs> Yeah, and snotlings are unbelievable. Like snot, snotlings are so powerful. Uh, the, the 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 swarming mechanic, uh, it actually got nerfed. Before swarming got nerfed, it was ridiculously, insanely powerful. Now it's just you know overpowered. <laughs> but but originally, before it was nerfed, it was it was. I mean, they were ridiculous. What um, underworld? This is of course when you can see the snotlings. <laughs> yes, you, yeah, you that makes them, them even more powerful. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Definitely. Look, look at you know crouching tiger, hidden snotling, isn't it? It's brilliant. You know <laughs> the, the opponents have got no idea where they are. I think he's going to go for the. No, he's not. See, this is the problem. I don't think he's used this dirty player in in both games yet. In either game, I don't think he's used that dirty player, which is not what you'd want from a skill is it I, mm. I don't know why he's taken one sneaky git and one dirty player maybe it's like dirty player for other gutter runners and sneaky git for just everybody maybe that's the idea yeah so I think this is okay now for Cold Troop I think he'll just go for the uh He's, he does have like a 75% pickup and then a 75% catch rather than just a 50% um, pickup. But that's, isn't that the same? <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. So maybe you should just pick it up on the uh, catcher. If he wants it on the catcher. How uh, do you think Arts? What, what do you think is his mindset right now when he sees the sees Cal Troop on the approach as he is? Um, what do you think is is 
first thing in the playbook for him come his, uh, his 11th turn. I think he's just, you know, it's. <laughs> it, I think it's pretty much the same. You you hold the center, and you just you know try and pick off anything you can. Uh, you, you might be looking to blitz the ogre here. Um, you could block with the. I think he might be looking to blitz with the ogre here because he's got two assists for this hit. Could punch him out, and then he could come in with the ogre. That that might be a might be something he thinks about. Um, but maybe not. He, he might just. I think he'll just hold the center and play conservatively. Yeah, there we go for a blitz there. Yeah, just 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 clear clear the players that are under pressure, dodge them back, and just stay in front and just keep doing that. And and if you keep doing that, you you, you know you you give yourself the chance to to get lucky and your opponent the chance to get unlucky basically by by just staying there, <laughs> just staying there and and holding is is pretty pretty strong plan usually. Then you're putting the onus on them to like you know do something about it, either pile in. In which case yeah. you might you might get a bunch of hits, or try to push it one side or the other. In which case you know maybe you can rotate over and, and cause some problems there. So you might, you might, sorry. No, no, go ahead, mate, go ahead. Um, you might try and turn the corner with this guy. He's got this held to the edge, but this one isn't. So yeah, first thing he moves is to go in there. So yep, he is going to try and try and turn the corner here. So this is the thing. So this is what you want the offense to do against you. You want them to try and turn the corner, but you know not succeed very well, and then you can like slam in and either force them to score early or force them to not score, like getting the ball off them. <laughs> I was going to remind you all you guys at home as well watching that uh, of course tomorrow we're back with our second day of uh of action ahead of next weekend's grand finals and tomorrow we're very much focusing on the lower bracket matchups that are coming our way uh determining who will be co continuing in the competition we're looking for two spots aren't we only, only two spots jimmy of the players remaining in the lower bracket to qualify also for next weekend joining the four who'll go through from the winner's bracket um so it's all to play for every 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 single game is a case of or you go through or get knocked out it's it's one of two ways yeah yeah that's right isn't it so i think by the end of the day we'll have four players through to next weekend and four players out and then those the eight players remaining will be battling through the losers bracket to, to turn eight into two right yeah yeah pretty cool it's very cool I mean, it's, it's great for us on the sidelines going oh it's really cool if you're actually <laughs> doing it and, and playing it and living it live you're thinking i oh, can't oh, this is this is crazy uh <laughs> looks as well here like uh on the on the lower bracket right now crucifer and eliod a 1-0 victory for crucifer in that matchup wow wow, wow. Well, I feel terrible for Elliot now after after touting him as the as the favourite and the best coach, and then he's been dumped out instantly. Oh, oh, sad. <laughs> oh, oh, sad. Oh. But uh, that means Crucifer, by the looks of things, will be going through to the next round, the lower bracket too, uh, and the I, I believe the loser of this will go up against Crucifer. Oh wow. Wow, that is that is going to be a interesting match for sure. Yeah, so real real pressure on Art to win this then, isn't there? <laughs> a pressure. You do a not pressure. you do not want to face Cruz, that's for sure. Yeah, that's huge. Tomorrow tomorrow's got some massive games. Considering this, like there's winners, winners bracket today has been the, the focal point. Like, like lower bracket is going to be a a huge uh, one tomorrow. Not to miss for you guys as well. Honestly, come back tomorrow. 1,000% to see how it unfolds. 1 million percent. 1 million dollars. 1 million percent. <laughs> the humans and uh, call troops swaying their play to the right-hand side of the field now as the Rat Ogre desperately attempts to, to batter the uh, one of the lone teammates out on the left-hand side. I mean, do you think this is going to be a, a, an opportunity for Cal here to get that much-needed tie uh, touchdown? 
Well, yeah, this is this is the thing. Uh, Art plays a hell of a lot of ladder, and and he generally shepherds people to scores to allow himself to win two one rather than battle with all of his might to stop the score. Um, and I guess that's one of the things where NAF style more tend to just do everything they can to stop the score. And and Art is very willing to just shepherd people down, you know, leave a little lane open, and then if they take it, you know, either shut them down or or you know just let them score. So. He likes leaving this on a little bit. Yeah. I think this is a, a mistake to take it here. I think he should maybe go back to the middle. I think that's what he should do. Gets to gets to do a big gang foul on the roger here. Um, he's only got two KOs, so he can afford a send off. So I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing a big big gang foul or you know, smashing this uh, goblin as well, and just maybe recentralizing, maybe hitting a snotling. A lot of pro a lot of options here. Here we go, chat. Let us know. Do you think Caltry will be able to tie this one up in time with only four turns remaining? I'm an optimist. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm an optimist. Jimmy, that's, mm. just, that's just how I roll. <laughs> I mean, everyone knows how much of an optimist I am. <laughs> Anyone who's seen me play Blood Bowl. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, the, the thing, if, he, if he ties it up, Art's going to do everything he can to, you know, make sure he ties it up before turn eight. But then, you know, Coltrude's trying to try and stall it till turn eight. So, yeah, he's not going to push too far forward now. But he is sticking to this side, which could be a mistake. There's definitely going to be chain options on here, very much so. So we could see the ball in the crowd here. How is how is how is Artman's going to play this one? I think he I think he might take a long time. I think he will to do. think. Maximize that you know the clock usage hundred yeah. percent. Honestly, we could see like just like a wild. A really wild move here, like uh, dodges with a goblin and stuff. I, I, I really, I really think he might. Oh, he's fallen over. Um, I mean, what I'm thinking is Snotling dodges in here. He blocks him, chains out the ball to here, mm -hmm. and then there's no. Oh, there's a tackle there. This goblin then runs around and surfs. Like that's pretty easy with no thought whatsoever. So. I'm sure Art can think of something a bit cleverer if he wants to, you know, if he wants to go for this move. I think he might want to go for it. It's pretty, it's pretty tempting to uh, to surf the catcher here, but he might just go, you know, like safe moves and just punch everybody and hope for the best. Yeah, <laughs> it's completely, it's completely reasonable to just punch everybody and hope for the best. <laughs> uh, that's blood ball for you. Just punch everyone. <laughs> hope for the best. It'll be fine. Does it work out? Yeah. yeah, it's maybe a trap going for the ball sack. That, that that that's the thing, you know. You don't you don't have to sack the ball every chance you get, you know. So like, you know, it seems like he's made the assessment very, relatively quickly, right? A minute in here, yeah. Looks like he's uh, maybe just going to be content with backing off, screening. Art does tend to play very conservatively. Um, which, you know, again, that's a little bit better on ladder and a little bit worse in these kind of tournaments because, you know, he's always the best coach on ladder um, than his opponent. Well, not always. 99% of the time he's the better coach than his opponent on ladder. Mm -hmm. where, where, you know, and often a golfing class, whereas here, it, even if he is the better coach, he's, it's only a little bit, you know, so he can't, he can't rely on being so much better that, He's got absolute inevitability of winning the game if you know if everyone plays safe and all the expected things happen. Like you do have to start pushing your luck at some points, sometimes. Yeah, of course. He hasn't blitzed yet. Is he going to blitz the roger to get it back into the action? He is, and he rolls a one. <laughs> So he doesn't get it back into the action. Most reliable big guy in the game, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably wishing he went for the ball sack now. 
use a reroll on that. I think that's a bit of a frustration reroll, honestly. I don't think, I don't think that was so much a. Uh, I mean, maybe it was right. Maybe he thought it was it was important to to shut down that side, but I, I think that was maybe a bit of a tilt reroll there. Still, I mean, still not easy, right, to break through here. There's a lot of players removed for our four, eight, nine players. Ten. He's still got ten. He's removed all these players. He's still got ten. <laughs> <laughs> well, that so goes, to, goes to show when you've got the when you've got the roster with what sixteen brought into the mix. I mean, that's just come the latter stages of the game, at least. Anyway, we saw when Andy was you know, whittled down to eight, and it made a huge impact. The fact that at this stage, six out, still ten remain. That you know. It pays dividends um, come this part of the competition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the ball down, I would run it easily, but yeah, you know, maybe he just thought it was. I, I think it was, he snapped re rolled it. I think he should have maybe thought for a little bit um, before he did it. Surely Coltrip's used some. Uh, I think this is just must be a bug not showing any, right? He must have used some of it. No, yeah. he's not. He's, he's on seven thirty on our stream. So really, but, yeah, he just hasn't used any any bonus time whatsoever. That is that is pretty wild, isn't it? It is wild. It's some fast play playing against, you know, the probably the best coach with the best race, and uh, he's not not phased at all. Very quick player. Well, you mentioned earlier on the different the difference as well, like defensive lines and, and setups. Whereas um, Paul Troop seems to have had his you know, positioning a bit more. I don't want to use the word open, but it wasn't. You know, Andy's was very like lot. It was very kind of solid. There was a lot of like you know kind of um, symmetry to it as well. Whereas uh, with the humans, Paul Troop's been a bit more kind of uh, willing to kind of be flexible where necessary. Yeah. I, I, I mean, he has been helped, uh, you know, in this drive by the fact that the rogue is isolated now. So, so a lot of why Andy was sticking together was multiple guards, which the humans have only got three, and also, you know, fear of the rogue. And so now, you know, I guess Caldrick just hasn't shown any fear. I guess, I guess that's the thing. I, oh. I mean, it's only a snotling, but it was the first action. And now all of a sudden, there's a big hole here. Turn 15, you can smash through. Wow, that, that I mean, that's unlucky, double one, but that is pretty much the defense gone. Yeah, so maybe, maybe that was it. Maybe just like, you know, maybe, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Has no. to reroll that, obviously. Um, maybe that was it. Maybe, maybe, you know, Andy thought, hey, because, because the claw is better versus all, and orcs don't expect to lose players. Oh my god, that's he's had so, so while he got an amazing opportunity, he's rolled some <laughs> dice. dice to take oh, advantage no. of it. <laughs> these um, ones, these ones are killer. Yeah, check the seed. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, one of the great things about Blood Bowl is all the is all the conspiracy theorists who are. Who are sure that you know the, the dice don't work properly and there's something wrong with this dice seed and all this kind of rubbish? So <laughs> check the seed is pretty great. Um, and you know, obviously the the RNG is fine. It's just people people you know get bad dice and, and you know. <laughs> but uh, oh well. So that's a good yeah. And there was a good non follow. You really wanted to follow to put tackle on both of the snotlings, but. He has to be able to blitz here and push him back to get through. So yeah, that was a great non-follow. Instinct was to follow there, hundred percent. But uh, he had to not follow to get this push direction. And uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe that, may, honestly, maybe that's it. You know, like maybe maybe Andy rated his chances higher than Call Troop rated his, his chances. So maybe mm. maybe Andy was like, "Look, I just can't let him get lucky with a rat ogre." And, and you know and and remove loads of players whereas Coltrick's like look you might remove a bunch of players but hey I'll try and remove players too so let's just go for it so yeah maybe that maybe that's what it is maybe a bit of a bit of fear from Andy and no fear from Coltrick that's the thing humans are like humans because they're so fast they can play down players okay and and orcs can't play down there. I was uh, that's what I I lost that thought in my head orcs can't play down players very effectively at all and humans can. 
So, so you know, he is justified. Andy was much more justified to be scared of the right ogre. Also, you know, the the claws on the right ogre affect orcs a lot more than it affects humans. So, it was totally reasonable to be mm. more scared. Cheeky one dice surf at the end. He's got this guy free to move as well because the ogre is is boneheaded. A GFI here would be really nice. But, um, Rush. You can't, yeah, rush a rush here would be really nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, the rush would be really nice, but it just you know you're not going to re-roll it. Ah, he does get it, and as we've seen from Andy, one rush can be one death. <laughs> does the one D surf get him out? <laughs> Taxi Fitchy. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good, Dimmy. Oh, wow. So straight away, Art knew what he was doing. He, he dodges him through instantly. I guess, yeah, the, the goblin's going around. One, two, three, four, five, six. GFI. Now he might double GFI because he's pop dodge. One, two, three, four. Yeah, double GFI, I think. Obviously, puts in the reroll. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to art. It's in. It's in the rain. <laughs> it's in the rain. <laughs> you absolutely. I guess. So maybe he thinks if he rerolls this, he has to reroll the hit as well. So maybe he doesn't reroll. Keeps three rerolls for the one turn and overtime. But oh, this is a big decision. That is a the good big one. Yeah, and he's got a minute. He's got a minute to think about it. So you know, might as well use the time. <laughs> and he does have to re-roll the hit as well <laughs> he doesn't oh wow wow I thought he was like pot committed there you know poker terminology I thought if you're going to use the re-roll to, to get there to hit you've got to re-roll the hit as well and especially if it's like that oh this is a mistake okay he gets away with it that was really 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 sloppy and lazy from Cold Truth now, I know he's got three dice, and, you know, he, he's got very big odds of knocking over that Snotling, but if he doesn't knock him over, yeah, yeah. the catcher has to dodge away, and he could have just pulled players in. He had loads of free players. He absolutely should have uh, filled all those squares so that the Snotling couldn't have sidestepped anywhere. So, yeah, that was a that was actually a randomly a big mistake there by Courtroom, <laughs> but he gets away with it. And, I mean, that was just absolutely... You know, categorically a mistake because, you know, it was the last turn and a half. All those players were free. They were. He didn't do any other moves. A lot of the time, you know, they'd be they'd be payoff for doing the blitz that way. But uh, that time was understandable, right? It's it's uh, the pressure and everything. But I think he just autopiloted, autopiloted the turn and uh, yeah, got I mean, away with it. He did. Did get away with it. I mean, look. I mean, looking at the kind of like the. Uh... <laughs> the, the the bench on the sidelines there massively effective for Arty with with our you know what, what is looks like it's going to be an overtime very very soon here now um resetting going into that i mean does does caltrip have the advantage now depends depends on these two well, f first of all it depends if art scores the one turn because this is, this is a this is a terrible absolutely monumentally terrible setup from call troop <laughs> Um, I don't know if it's related to that blitz that he just did, but this is unbelievably bad to not defend against the one turn at all. Like that is, it's it's outrageous. I don't. I mean, he must have brain farted. He must have just thought he'd lost. But even if he, yeah, I must have thought this was overtime. This is like, yeah, this I, is just unbelievable. Why would you do that? I, I just don't know. He must have thought he must have thought it was overtime, or it's the only explanation that he must have thought it was already overtime. Art gets a second reroll. Wow, wow, that's this is like literally the worst possible setup. Having having three players next to each other like that, and nothing, uh, you know, no backline whatsoever, and he doesn't even need the power here, Art. So that's unbelievable. It's actually unbelievable. <laughs> do, do, do you think Art's on? Do you think Art's on for this? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Except, wait, he's put a goblin there instead of a. He should have had. A, <laughs> he's actually put this clan right in the wrong square. 
He should have had a strength three player here to make the hit, but it, it's fine. It, it, it's still on. It's still bit, really, really, really on. Will Cal be, ki will Cal be kicking himself? No, uh, that's rubbish. Okay, so <laughs> this is rubbish from that. I mean, you know, that's, oh man, I do. Oh, oh, ah. Oh, ah, I do not like that. He, he could have taken the pow. He could have taken the pow and then filled in these squares and then pushed and pushed the gut runner forward there. That was. He really needs to work on his one turns. It's funny, you know. Art always says his biggest leak is his, is his one turn is his one turning, but it's not worth him spending the time to get better at it because of you know the tiny odds difference it would make. Mm -hmm. And I can see now why he didn't bother <laughs> taking a sidestep. <laughs> Two heads got to run it because wow, if his one turning's this bad, of course he's not going to think about it. That was, that was uh, not what I would have done. But who can say if it's good or bad? <laughs> I don't think you can use a reroll in it. I mean, he had to know that he could have taken not taken the power. But like that's really weird not to. It's really weird not to. Man, I, th I mean, I think it's bad. Maybe he should have done the pass earlier as well, by the way, um, because this is quite a long pass. But he does get three dice on the ball with this. And on the ball, you know, to clear the ball from the tackle zone. Yeah, he probably should have passed a, a while ago. Probably, I mean... <laughs> Probably. The, the problem is it with being in the rain, uh, it just gets the push. So it's in the rain, so it's like a, a four plus catch. And there's an intercept chance. In fact, I guess he's just not. He's going to pass it to somebody else now. Did he pass it to this Skaven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it'll be like a three plus pass, three plus catch, and then a uh, three plus pass, four plus catch, then a full. Oh, maybe he's just got to launch it. He's, he's just got to launch it to the gutter. No, I think this is incorrect in the rain. I think the rain changes the maths. I think that was correct if it wasn't raining. I think the rain changes the maths on this. But here we go, four plus handoff. Oh, the rain makes the difference. Oh, he gets it. So it's one GFI to win in normal time. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Can you believe it? <laughs> wow. I mean we, we thought I mean we thought it was it was going, going to overtime for sure there, but Jimmy just art, art has not only just pulled out in a, a, a play out of the bag there, but also confirms a place into next weekend's finals. I mean astounding. Astounding stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was ooh, that was that was uh, something. He he got away with it a little bit. He used that reroll to get the power, and uh, you know he could have he could have moved around it, but you know it got him that extra push that saved him doing the extra GFI. And yeah, you know he, he got all the dice that he needed. And a big mistake from Coral Troop. He just made another one. Maybe maybe his head was out of the game a little bit there. Uh, but yeah, it, you know it, show, it showed the power of Underworld, didn't it? It really showed the power of Underworld there. Art getting that one turn. Hadn't built for it. Didn't need to. Totally. I mean, do you, I mean, I mean, how as well? We must be looking back and thinking, what was I thinking? Maybe, maybe, maybe just. I, I mean, we said there's a lot. There's there's so much going on here. Be it fatigue and kind of like overthinking, kind of strat as well. But that kind of moment defensively um, could was was absolutely preventable. Yeah, yeah. Well, mitigatable. <laughs> he, mitigatable. He could have set up a lot better. Yeah, he could have set up a lot better. Um, at the end of the day, if, if people, you know, snotlings and everything, it's 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 such a powerful one-turn underworld that, uh, you know, there's really no way of setting up that you can stop it, but you can make it a hell of a lot harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly can. I mean, for you guys as well watching at home, did you get it correct? Did you think art would go all the way? Because, I mean, we've watched two, two arts games on the official stream today, um, both uh, winning out and, and qualifying for next week alongside Strider and Diamed already confirmed as well for next week. There's three players already uh, with one to come.
uh, be it either uh, we get, who, I think I think it's, it, is it either Har- um, Guru or Anarian as well I think who are going to be yeah. going to head to head to, to, to determine that one as well um, exciting stuff we're gonna, we'll have a look at the brackets as well very soon for you guys so you can kind of keep you up to speed exactly how things look both in the winner's bracket and the lower bracket too here um, but let's take yeah just think about the highlights from today quickly uh, here as well Jimmy um, big highlights today what's really stood out for you as, as key moments uh, since, uh, since this began earlier on uh, this afternoon Oh, I mean, I mean, it's, it's a, a big one. There's a, there's a few, yeah. I think uh, you know the one turn was it was a big, big mistake from Coltrip there, allowing allowing out there to to get the win. Um, the 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 GFI, though, sorry, the rush, the rush of doom for Andy, <laughs> that totally dumped the game on its head after it looked like it was, you know, it looked almost secure, didn't he? And then and then that rush, but, but it was over. So um, yeah, I think they're the two big turning points and. Lots of you know the all oh, the the Strider thing with the you know the, the the lizard man hitting the skink the Saurus splits that was a huge one for sure that that sealed the Lord's fate I think in the in the first half. Yeah, you're right, and I'd be a few guys as well. Um, we have actually got the brackets right now, so let's take a look at those and see um, how the land lies. Uh, so you can wrap your heads around the chaos that has ensued and what's to come as well, uh, courtesy of uh, Spectacular Sunday right on the horizon here. Um, this is how our, our current lineup is for the winner's bracket. You can see that only one space left guaranteed to be the four uh, who are will be seeing next weekend whatever happens in grand finals. Um, Hiru and Anarion going head to head to determine that one, joining Diomed, Strider and Artemis as uh, mentioned. And that is the four absolutely categorically confirmed for next weekend and you can see exactly how they got there i think as well you know we've seen i mean look at the players that were in that winner's bracket there who i mean so many of which actually go down to the lower bracket and this is how things look here and our, our man andy davo there uh going up against moving slayer the next round but um you know there you go crucifier and eliod there i mean jimmy um wow. eliod was one of your predictions to go all the way it was, yeah. But it's it's funny. The thing is, they were, it was like it's wild. Honestly, my top four picks for the whole tournament were Elliot, Crucifer, uh, Andy, and Art. And obviously now, Elliot's out, and Andy and Cruz are both in the losers bracket. So there's there's only only Artemis, uh, you know, stands alone as the in the top half. Well, there is there is Stride, right? I I actually thought the matchups favoured Strider to, to get to the final. So uh, there, there is an element of that for sure. Um, you know that that might play a part in terms of you know how it all works out, how it shakes out the way the draw is now. Yes, I mean we will see. You know tomorrow is going to be very much lower bracket focus. Remember, obviously, guys, this is the official broadcast. We had three games today, three games tomorrow. Then, we'll, of course, next weekend we'll be in the studio together with Andy, uh, looking at uh, our last six teams in the competition here. Um, interestingly, as well, I mean. Lower brackets tomorrow. We've got some some huge uh, head to heads coming up. Um, what do you think? I mean, dare, dare we say what we think might happen tomorrow? What we kind of any predictions for who you think of the only two player? There will be two spaces ultimately uh, tomorrow who will qualify, and uh, we've got a bunch of players left. Um, Jimmy, any any fantastic insight from yourself, sir? <laughs> I think uh, I, I can't remember the bracket. It, it looks like Crucifer and Andy will have to play each other, right? So it can't be both of them. Is that correct? No, that's not. That's not correct. So Andy Ooh. and Movement Slayer versus uh, Galentio, uh, um, or I think it's going to be Hiru or Anarion. Oh so. right. Well, there you go. Then there's there's the prediction. Crucifer versus Andy. Oh, oh no, they're the two that get through. Yeah, Crucifer and Andy get through. <laughs> There's my prediction. I, I think it's a, I think it's a, a totally valid prediction. And for you guys at home, make sure to do that as well. Let's know in the chat who you think uh, is going to go all the way through and join uh, the three confirmed, soon to be fourth. Uh, tomorrow is going to be absolutely unreal. I mean, I, I think what we, we talked about earlier on as well is the is the different uh, races involved as well. Here is is a real a real mixed barrel, a real mixed bag of like who's going to be going through, and it just makes it even more electric uh, come Grand Finals weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really cool to see all the races represented. Uh, the the rules pack actually did give quite a lot of diversity. A lot of us expected loads and loads of underworld. We got loads of lizard men in the qualifiers, but yeah, the the actual top sixteens being very diverse in terms of racial choices. Absolutely right. Um, I'm looking forward to catching up. Obviously, Andy, we we the whole the <laughs> we're also the broadcast here. Jimmy and myself and Andy were like, right, the three of us here will chat loads because Andy's been so entrenched in in, in gameplay all day. <laughs> we've hardly, we hardly seen him, but tomorrow he'll definitely be back with uh, with uh, with with loads for us, and we can't wait to see him um, when we uh, get a chance to chat to him as well. Because 
yeah, we knew it was going to go one of two ways. The Artemis, uh, you know, uh, Andy game was was a big a big difference maker. We didn't know how it was going to play yeah. out, but again, we must shout out to all the, all the players taking part in this. Um, rescheduling their their real lives around the timetable, it's been massively appreciated, guys. So big shout out to all of you there. Um, we've been saying it, Jimmy. Like it's so great that everyone's kind of come together and going right. Let's make this happen. This is a, a huge thing that Akon's doing uh, with Cyanide and the rest of the gang to put this all together for us. And everyone's everyone's just been brilliant. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. You know, just just great goodwill from the community. Like it's it's just fantastic for Nacon and uh, or Nacon, isn't it? Sorry, Nacon and Cyanide to doing this. It's it really is great. I love love to see it and. You know, it's been maybe it's a rocky road at times with Blood Bowl three, but now it's they're turning it around. It's fantastic. It really is. Um, for you guys, thank you so much for being here, uh, watching today's broadcast. Uh, we've been looking forward to this so much, and we've got so much more to look forward to as well. We mentioned we've got a studio next week. It's going to be absolutely fantastic for those grand finals. But don't forget, tomorrow is a big one, a real big one. Where we're having our lower bracket matchups. We're going to determine those last two players who will join the four from the winners bracket in that weekend. So do make sure uh, to uh, come and see us again tomorrow. You can find the schedules online on the channel. We're back here tomorrow, uh, same kind of time. So make sure to tune in. Um, Jimmy, I've had a great time. I've, I've enjoyed spending time with you, my friend. Yeah, so have I. It's been it's been fantastic. We, Cheers. We, we've had some wonderful times. I bet I, I should say taxi for Savage and Jimmy. I mean, it's. <laughs> If you were there, you'll know. Um, it's time for us to go, but thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to the production team, uh, all the partners here as well. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for some more absolutely unreal Blood Bowl 3 action here on Season Finals. We look forward to seeing you then. Take care and goodbye from us for now.